Winning a Heisman Trophy is tough enough playing one position. Travis Hunter's out here doing it playing two separate positions at a really high level. He's a top two wide receiver and a top two cornerback in this draft class. We're going to separate the corner from the wide receiver today and talk about what makes him so special and how he's going to be able to play either or position that he wants to at the NFL. Let's dive in and talk about cornerback Travis Hunter. Part of being a DB is knowing how to tackle, when to tackle, when to give your effort, right? Being able to get guys down efficiently in space, all of those things. I would say Travis Hunter is not a purebred tackler, right? He, he's one, he's 185 pounds soaking wet and he's 6'1". Maybe he's on the shorter side of that. But what I will give him credit for is finding different ways and more efficient ways to bring players down and ball carriers down. So right here, you can see he's on the block outside trying to get underneath here you see the running back is going to cut back around this guy's also a very underrated player dj giddens out of kansas state running back for all you premium members out there i did a breakdown of giddens very fun player but what travis hunter does here comes across the body right he does a nice job of flipping his hips changing directions with the running back and then timing this properly so right there you see he's in pursuit he knows he has that sideline help too so he's going to stop right here go low get that shoulder pad across the ball and then lay lay out to be able to bring him down not the best tackler in the world five missed tackles this season i think he's much less aggressive in the tackling department than, than a lot of other corners specifically in this draft class you have some really physical get down after it guys but he's not going to just lie down all the time he's just trying to find more efficient ways playing two ways wide receiver or cornerback He's got to find different ways to maybe put less strain on his body. So I'll give him a little grace there, but also understand that with that, you're going to find some missed tackles and things of that nature. So just something to keep in mind with Travis Hunter, the tackler. And for all of the the effort to tackle, I don't think that there's a, ever a play that he just purely gives up on. Like he's right here. He's away from the play guarding his receiver. He tries to get down there, maybe slap that football out at the last second and do what he can to make a play. But when you're playing both sides of the football and you're playing a hundred plus snaps a game, the effort, the energy level always has to be there. So from a physical recovery standpoint, it's not easy to play both sides. We all know that. That's why it doesn't happen very often. But he has a pro's mindset in this regard. There's a lot of times where he'll be in, go watch some interviews where he talks about he's always in recovery after he's got different types of technology that he's always accessing to be able to make sure he's, his body is in peak shape for that. So I appreciate what he understands about the game and what he the wear he puts on his body and how he really uses it to his advantage right the guy's got that energizer bunny mentality he doesn't really quit and when you're playing both sides of the football at the level that he does week in and week out when he's fully healthy it's really hard not to appreciate that so from a pure cornerback man coverage standpoint he's a sticky player right the athleticism is there we see that he's got a really good understanding of route concepts right here he's inside shade on this receiver so if you're going to go outside that's fine i can turn around with you but i'm gonna take away the inside the receiver's going to give a little inside jab right come inside outside try to get to the inside again and this is where i again i appreciate the, the wide receiver does a nice job of honestly trying to get back across the face but you can see right here as he's moving in this direction hunter is going to use his right hand to keep a little bit of momentum and use that to flip his hips around right there keeps in that hip pocket and when the receiver turns around guess who's right there staring him in the face hunter and then he's going to body him up a little bit as the receiver comes out this way towards the ball again this is where you get to see some of that as well because he's going to have the receiver take him to the football when he's coming towards that the line of scrimmage a little bit closer that way he's going to now get his eyes that way and then try to make a play in the football so the athleticism shows up that ability to flip his hips and stay sticky in the hip pocket with his receivers is really one of the the attributes of man coverage that i love about him because he's so quick he could probably play a little bit of slot but he's only lined up there 12 snaps this season he is a true outside corner and i really do appreciate that he's willing to go out there and just do everything that he can to play on the outside short side of the field right here and i will say in soft press alignment when he's backpedaling there are going to be times where i think that he gets a little bit too back heavy so he's not necessarily got his hips all the way under him so you see right here he's leaning with his back right backs up a little bit high he's not as down underneath himself his feet have to go back a little bit further and what that does is it gives receivers more it gives us something to take advantage of so if you're leaning backward and i jab one way i'm going to be able to make you either buckle 
like right here, like he does right here. You see that outside jab step from the receiver. He jabs outside, and you see the buckle from Travis Hunter, and that it makes it harder to be able to react quickly because now you're covering more ground coming down to be able to break with that receiver. And then it, right there, you see he breaks across the face and he gets that that reception right there. He's trying to get out of the way of this, so the you know the quote unquote missed tackle here. I'm not going to put on him a ton. He's got a safety coming across and trying to make a play, so he's trying to get out of the way so he doesn't get hurt, right? This could be very easily team-on-team crime-friendly fire. We don't want that, so he comes around showing you, again, more athleticism and what, what his eyes see. Does a really nice job there, unfortunately. Like I said, they end up getting more yards after it, but that back lean for him can be a problem at times, and I think it's something with a two-way problem where you see it right here with the quickness. You can force him to buckle a little bit, and you can over – he can overcorrect in that regard, but also it can be an, a better should be taken advantage of by some physical receivers. So right here, again, he's got outside leverage. He's leaning a little bit right here as the receiver is getting close and his body comes up just a bit. And then you see the little bit of push right there. There's no Ill illegal contact in college football. So that can be taken advantage of there. I think it's more likely to happen as a soft press player and some of those really savvy NFL players who are good at offensive pass interference, right? Maybe just a little push at the line right here where you want to just, he's doing a nice job here, but once he gets a little bit further back is where that the shoulders start to come up a little bit. And when you are leaning back and having a little bit more playing on your heels a little bit, that can be taken advantage of with physicality. And we saw some of the quickness. So just something to monitor for him as he's playing, getting, obviously he watches a ton of film like in the uh, college game day on on Saturday before he was up there with the, with the, uh, the guys talking about how he watches and he's got to watch eight, 10 hours of film each week. So he watches himself. He gets better. He prepares very well. I think he'll see that. And that's something that he doesn't do all the time either. It's just something that when you're in that moment, you can lose it a little bit and you can see wide receivers right there. Take advantage of that. But he's got really great trust in his physical abilities right here left on an island he plays the football he can play the receiver and he can play the quarterback in this instance you're going to see the trust that he has in his ability to play the receiver now he gets stacked right here right and for a lot of corners i would say that's a problem being able to get stacked that vertically but i think he's got a very quick ability to recover he's got good recovery speed and then the athleticism to kind of explode at the catch point or even explode with his jumps towards the football right here again getting up with the receiver and this football one it was thrown behind a bit it needs to be led up in front of the receiver get it downfield a little bit i still think it doesn't matter that much but right there with that trajectory a lot of quarterbacks will take advantage of wider uh, dbs with their heads turned right we see that all the time this doesn't necessarily matter one the ball's out of bounds but two you're going to see right here as we get to the sideline or the end zone view he's able to push his hands when he explodes off the ground it's a good it's a good adjustment by the receiver but he explodes up through the catch point with that offhand right that's something that he's so good at and why he can play the receiver so well he can time really exactly the same time with those receivers so he goes up right that's where the football has to be so he's timing his hand his jump right through it at the catch point now he wouldn't have been able to get two feet or one foot in bounds but it shows you the technique and the ball skills to be able to to handle guys on the outside, whether they're going to be jump ball specialists or trying to break off in that instance. So from a, you know, man coverage standpoint, I think he has a lot of those tools, especially with his physicality that you, he's still willing to show. I, I think his press technique could use a little bit more. He really, he really kind of gears up and really wants to shove people, which again, if you time it, you miss bad things can happen. Um, but right here, just at the top of this route, you're going to see him kind of push the receiver. You're going to want to time that, maybe not necessarily hugely like this, right? This, this, right. You don't want to be showing the referees in the NFL that you're just going to play physical with them, but he undercuts this route. And again, shows you those ball skills where he can catch the football away from his body at so many different angles. That wiry frame comes in handy for that regard as well, because you know, he can move it in so di many different unique ways after the catch here, you see, he's able to generate about 38 yards after the interception, but just at that catch point where he's able to catch the football away from him, but he also understands I'm in his hip pocket. So I have that, ex that explosion, that quick explosion, right? To just go underneath, undercut that route. And then boom, I have the interception. So, you know, from a man coverage standpoint, he does a lot of things you want. He has some tendencies, I think that can be taken advantage of, but overall just getting recovery speed. I think he's got really good ball skills. We know he has the change of direction, right? He's got those hip flips. And, and I love that about his game. And when we're talking about 
zone coverage, he's one of the smartest corners out there. He's so well studied. Again, going back to him studying 10 hours of tape each week, that's a lot for, for a lot of people, right? That, that's what you want, as much tape as possible. And then he, he does not go with the receiver, right? Baits this throw a little bit, and, and that's what you're looking for. So the emotion number three across the formation, Travis Hunter in zone. All right, eyes to the quarterback first. I know I got this wheel route. Coming up down here. So he's going to get depth initially, right? And depth initially. You want to still meet him because at the end of the day, you have safety help, oh, help over the top. Really should rotate. 23 is coming down this way, but they got to get out here. And this is where you get some pressure into the, the quarterback, right? So now he's moving off of his spot this way. And they're getting one other player in his face. So typically a lot of quarterbacks aren't going to be seeing that guy right there right they're not going to see this player right here even though he's got his hand up eyes come down a lot with these college quarterbacks and travis hunter does a really nice job again of reading the eyes of the quarterback right there knowing when he gets out of out of that movement out of the pocket there he's going to be trying to either get the rid of the football or go make a play with his legs and right there the eyes told him he is going to that flat receiver ball doesn't have a lot of speed on it he's able to get triggered downhill and make that interception so really good job playing again we talk about playing the receiver playing man coverage and now playing the quarterback's eyes in your own zone responsibility getting depth with that wheel route down the the right hand or the left hand sideline and then just undercutting this again for an interception fantastic football iq and then reading those quarterback eyes just shows you everything that he's able to do i think my favorite technique of his is the jam bail where he's just gonna jam you right here initially and then bail out with the receiver he's got such an understanding and quickness to be able to react with that they motion the receiver over and it comes into that slot right so they have a little bit of a switch release he's coming here he's going this way so these receivers essentially switch spots comes across his face make sure all right hands on first and then my hips don't even need to flow that way i can just keep going backpedaling that way he's so quick and understands exactly what he's doing again he's playing man coverage on that guy right there takes away the football or the, the uh, throw from the quarterback and, and really shows you how he can be utilized as a zone corner and a man cover corner almost in the exact same play right here so he's so smart fluid he has those tools you're looking for and then when you have the ability to, to again study this is from last year by the way i took this one from last year because again it shows that same technique but he is then rewarded because he is again so smart he knew ucla was going to do it we got the jam and then right here undercuts this route boom because he knows the quarterback's going to throw the football such an insane play to see that happen knowing the football's coming out right then and there again eyes are already on the quarterback as he's pushing that db or that, that wide receiver up the field and so here he is just doing what he, he instinctually knows very instinctual player, smart, athletic, has all the traits you, you really want from a press man corner, a guy that can play zone, can play the in the stay in the hip pocket when he's moving downfield, can play the football in the air, has all of those traits and those fantastic athletic abilities to that separate him among a lot of other corners, not just in college football, but why he's going to be vastly sought after for in the NFL. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. We have that wide receiver one. If you want to go check it out, why he's my wide receiver one in this class, he has jumped over Ter uh, Tedero and McMillan. And honestly, it's between, you know, Will Johnson's been hurt as well. So there's a battle right now for cornerback one in this class. I think Will Johnson, even with his injuries, would still technically be a little bit above Hunter for me. But the reason that he is one of if not the heisman favorite is because of the way he plays and it's got it takes more nuance for this one because he doesn't have all of the stats he doesn't have all the interceptions the receiving yards the touchdowns he does lead i believe with the big 12 and eight with eight touchdowns so there's something there for him as a receiver it's the film study why we have to get into it more for players like travis hunter and what he's doing and why it's so special and th that's a huge reason why he's not just one of the best corners wide receivers in this class the best player overall in the 2025 NFL draft class. He's one of the Heisman favorites for a reason. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you're new to the TDN YouTube channel, please head on over, hit the sub button, hit the like on the way out, and I'll see you guys next time.